Hello everybody, this is Dr. Steve Kachikian again from the Black Hills Regional Eye Institute. And today I'm showing a, a more difficult or more complex case of, of what we call a white mature cataract. Now, what you can see we're doing here is rotating that lens. We have already uh, made our incisions. We have uh, inflated the eye with viscoelastic. We have stained the anterior capsule with some tripan blue for better visualization. And now we're rotating the lens and we are trying to sandwich the lens in that viscoelastic or uh, a gel material which helps uh, hold space inside the eye and it also helps uh, protect structures inside the eye. What is interesting about these white mature cataracts is that they, they can vary significantly uh, in consistency. So this one is fairly dense uh, it has a, a central a brittle core or central nucleus, and it has a more fibrous uh, peripher peripheral cortical shell. Okay, But some white cataracts are just the opposite. Some white cataracts are not brittle. They're actually uh, very soft and, and what we consider fluffy. And so the approach to removing uh, these Lenses of diff different consistency vary quite a bit, uh, but they look similar. So when uh, seeing a patient in the office, if they have a, what we consider a white cataract, uh, it helps to know how old the patient is, how the cataract developed, was it from trauma, is it from uh, longevity that the cataract has developed, because that will give us an idea uh, of the consistency and then help us kind of identify a technique to remove the lens. This particular cataract is in a, an older patient, so it's a very a dense lens, very thick, it's not soft at all. And so the technique here um, is one that requires some, some patience. And what we do is, is we um, take our instrument here and we go out over the edge of the lens and we gradually chop the lens into multiple pieces and, and when I say chop I mean we bring those two we, we spread the two instruments apart and then we kind of bring them together uh, pulling what we call the second instrument uh, through the lens to break it apart and Really, the, the reason this technique and this type of lens requires uh, quite a bit of patience is because if you're watching, it seems like there's not much happening. So every time I bring those two instruments together, just like this, and then separate them apart, it really doesn't look like we are making much progress. However, that's not uh, the case. We're actually making a fair bit of progress here. I will reinflate the eye with a little more viscoelastic, and we can see those bubbles as well. Do keep an eye on the bubbles. We will use those bubbles uh, to identify how much viscoelastic is in the eye in the future. Uh, the bubbles are held in place uh, by that viscoelastic or that gel, and so they stick to the gel, and when there's no more viscoelastic present, uh, the bubbles will, will disappear. So again, we are back to gradually breaking up that lens, pulling the two instruments together and separating them. And it seems like we're not getting very far, um, but what you'll notice here uh, in the next minute or so is that the, the more brittle central nuclear pieces will uh, separate from the more peripheral uh, kind of fibrous cortical pieces, and, and we will begin to get the more central portion of the lens out of the eye. Now, what, when you're looking at the video, the more central portion of the lens is probably a little more amber or brown compared to the more peripheral lens, which tends to be white or yellow. Okay, and so as the pieces come out, uh, you'll be able to, to see that. We're just kind of gradually trying to break up uh, this lens into small pieces uh, you don't need a large piece to, to come out to, to make headway. And so here we go. We'll bring those pieces together and separate them. And you can start to see here's one of the pieces of central nucleus. Okay, so it's more brown. It's brittle. There goes that air bubble. And we'll vacuum out the piece of lens. And because the air bubble's gone, 
Um, that's my indication that there's less viscote in the eye than I want there to be, and so we'll reinflate the eye with the viscoelastic substance. Uh, the viscoelastic substance, again, it protects uh, multiple structures of structures of the eye, it protects the iris, it, pr it protects um, the capsular bag, but most importantly probably uh, it protects the cornea. Uh, the cornea has a, a layer of cells on it that function to keep it nice and clear so that you see well. And the ultrasound energy that we use, um, here's another piece of central lens, but that ultrasound energy that we use to break up the lens into little pieces uh, can actually damage the corneal cells. Uh, so we use more viscote, in, especially in denser lenses like this one. Um, in certain cases, we might use a, a laser to try and uh, pre-treat the lens or soften it. Uh, that also works in uh, cases such as this. However, it, it is somewhat less effective uh, when the lens is uh, completely uh, white or opaque. And the reason is that uh, laser can't get uh, as far through the lens as we would like it to. So now we're again taking these little pieces uh, of central nucleus out. There's a brown one right there, and we'll probably work on trying to grab that and get that out. Um, just kind of gradually chopping each piece of lens. It helps to, to rotate the lens as well. You want to chop one area and then uh, separate as much as possible and then rotate the lens uh, to a new position. You can see here the piece of central nucleus coming out and it's not too fibrotic. It, it is dense but it does tend to uh, crumble. And what you will notice as we get uh, Toward the, to, towards the more peripheral portion of the lens is that it doesn't crumble. It doesn't crumble and collapse on itself. It's much more uh, fibrous and stringy and, and has to be forced a little bit more. And you'll see here's one of those more peripheral pieces even right there. It's more sticky. Uh, leathery is one term that we use uh, to describe those more peripheral pieces of lens. There's a lot of little fibers uh, that keep it together. And so it's, it's much less brittle, and it's much more difficult uh, to remove. Uh, in the past, uh, when we did cataract surgery, we used to describe lenses as, as ripe or ready to be removed. And this lens would clearly be past that. And although we don't really use those terms anymore, we, we remove the cataract when it's giving the patient um, difficulty. Uh, what used to be meant by a ripe lens was that it was of the proper consistency uh, to remove easily and wasn't going to be either too dense or too difficult to break up or too soft. What happens uh, or can happen when the lens is really soft is that it has the consistency uh, of, of jello and although that's very soft it tends to break apart and the lens does not like to come out of the eye very easily and so that's kind of the opposite uh, of what we have here okay but we're making some progress you can start to see what we call the red reflex um, we're getting through the central lens to the more peripheral leathery portion here and but we're continuing to chop the lens and rotate it in, into little pieces we're trying to keep our main fake emulsification handpiece in the center of the eye and do most of our manipulation with the second instrument. Here's a more leathery piece. What we're going to do is put some more, some more viscoelastic both in front of and behind that leathery piece because right behind uh, these leathery peripheral pieces of lens is the posterior capsule. And the posterior capsule separates the front of the eye from the back of the eye. And we try not, we try very hard not to violate or break the posterior capsule. And so when we're taking out um, these more peripheral and more posterior pieces of the lens, we will often put viscoelastic behind them to protect uh, another portion of the eye, the posterior capsule, from being vacuumed up into the handpiece. And 
that keeps it intact and prevents it from breaking. And so now I've got a larger portion of the lens removed. We're a little bit off the uh, screen or out of view here, but as we recenter, you can see uh, there's red reflex over to the right. And we'll put some more viscoelastic there to uh, highlight it and protect that area, but there is still dense white cataract over to the left. And so what we'll do is we'll go and gradually uh, break and chop each piece of white cataract uh, into smaller pieces and we use our second instrument to help uh, feed the fake emulsification hand piece just gently uh, pushing these pieces into that area of vacuum one at a time as i said earlier the, these more dense cataracts take a lot of patience it's really nice when the, the, the lens breaks up very quickly into numerous small pieces and is vacuumed out, but the denser lenses take more time. And the techniques are the same, but you just have to be more patient. So now we've got the large majority of that lens removed. There are still a few more central brittle pieces and probably a larger portion of a peripheral cortical material uh, that's still there. And we'll take now what we call an irrigation aspiration handpiece. So it has a smaller kind of opening and does a better job of, of just vacuuming lens and does not actually physically break up the lens material itself. So we'll use the second instrument here to, to break up uh, that piece of lens. This particular device doesn't, the irrigation aspiration handpiece only irrigates and aspirates. It does not have any ultrasound. Right now we have removed uh, a majority of the lens, so probably 95 to 99 percent of the lens is removed. We're going to use a little bit of uh, irrigation from a syringe to get the last remaining uh, pieces, those small cortical fibers. Um, those don't have to come out. Well, we try and get as many out as possible in general, um, but if those small fibers remain behind, they will gradually dissolve. Again, we try and get as many as possible out of there, but if some of those remaining fibers do remain in the eye uh, after the surgery, that's okay. There's a saying in ophthalmology called, perfect is the enemy of good, and what can happen is if you're being too aggressive trying to get out some of these little fibers, uh, you wind up either violating the posterior capsule or causing some other problem that really wouldn't have happened if you had just left well enough alone. So we get out as many fibers as possible. We reinflate the eye with that viscoelastic material to create some space. And then one thing um, that I like to do uh, before we put the lenses is in is I like to sweep uh, or polish the anterior capsule. And that will get that last remaining bit of anterior lens material um, out of the capsule, just kind of freeze it up. And I think that helps reduce uh, inflammation. And so whenever possible, I try and do that. Now that the anterior capsule has been uh, swept, we put our lens in. And so the lens is, is preloaded and injected in one piece, and it goes into the eye through approximately a 2.4 millimeter incision. That's the size of our incision. And then the lens unscrolls in the eye. Okay, and so we use, uh, this is called a Sinsky hook, and we use the Sinsky hook to open up the lens. I try and uh, free up both haptics or arms of the lens and get them to expand so that I have a, a good idea of exactly where the lens is going to sit uh, once the case is, is done. These are technically self-centering uh, lenses, and so they really should uh, center very well without much assistance uh, from me but I do try and expand the lens as much as possible um, before removing that remaining viscoelastic material. So now we're using a little more irrigation and aspiration to get all the viscoelastic material out of the eye. So that is helpful when we're doing the surgery, but at the conclusion of the case, we try and remove it all uh, because if it remains in the eye, um, it really causes the eye pressure to go up uh, substantially. It, it doesn't flow through the eye very well like the, the natural aqueous that the eye makes. And so we need to remove that viscoelastic material because it tends to clog the drain of the eye uh, if it remains. So we remove as much as possible, kind of sweeping behind the lens 
and going kind of in a 360 degree fashion to get it out of uh, the, the corners of the eye and then we reinflate the eye and we seal the incisions. To seal the incisions, um, we really just hydrate them. We put balanced saline solution uh, in each side of the incision. It tends to hydrate them and really there are no uh, leaks. If there's any suggestion that the incision is going to leak, uh, then most often we would uh, place a stitch. It's really no problem to place a suture or a stitch. It's, it's not that big a deal. Um, and it does provide some security uh, to the eye, but it has to oftentimes has to be removed in the future. And so if we don't need to place a, a stitch or a suture, we don't do that. I place some um, antibiotic inside the eye. I do one final hydration and check of the incisions, and we're done.